Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing Deceivers by Arch Enemy. So we've been listening to this album non-stop throughout this past week and I'm going to hand the floor to Vial, what did you think? Alright, so I'm going to, I might need a refresher on my own first impression because I like just kind of going back a little bit. I'm pretty sure my first impression is I liked the album but I was hoping it would grow on me, is that what I said? Something um, along those lines? I think so. I think you're like, I liked a few things and you felt that it had a good potential. A good potential to grow on me. Okay, so um, throughout the week, I'm listening to the album and I'm having a lot of mixed feelings. It's an album I really want to like, but for some reason was struggling with a lot of it. So in order to kind of ground myself, I wanted to get the point of reference out of the way, right? Which is something you do a lot of times, as we do anyway as reviewers. Listen to an older album, listen to the most recent album, you know, and, and then compare. Um, so I put on two other albums. One was Will to Power, which was the last album from this band. And then one was Rise of Tyrants, um, which was, uh, I can't remember what year it came out, but it was one of the last albums with Angela and the Amit Brothers and things like that. So those are my two points of reference. And I gotta say, based on those, this album, Deceivers, was a disappointment for me, which kind of makes sense in the in the vein that I was having trouble really getting into it. So there's some songs like The Watcher, for example, which is track number four on this album. Uh, it started out as my top song of the week. I thought, this is a great song. I really like the vocals and guitar harmonies that go on. Um, the pre-chorus is nice. It's got elements there, some really good riffs. Um, but for some reason throughout the week, the song started slipping on me and I started kind of getting bored of it which is not a good sign. When it's a song you like to begin with and it starts slowly going downhill, I felt the same way with Handshake With Hell. We did a reaction to that video. We both liked it off the um, when we reacted to the video. Thought this is a great song. The week starts out, Handshake With Hell is one of my top song songs. And then all of a sudden, it just starts boring me. The bridge is annoying. The solo pisses me off because it sounds almost like a carbon copy of One by Metallica. Um, at least the first chunk of the solo does, and every time it came on, I was like, oh, the one solo ripoff. And it just basically got to the point where I wanted to skip it, so... Well, I liked the song when I first heard it, but it just slipped away from me. I don't know what it is about it. Um, another song that we liked from Reaction was Deceiver Deceiver. Um, really like the drum intro on this song. Super dope drums. It's got this gallop beat, which a couple of songs have. Overall decent song, but it stayed there. This one didn't really slip on me, but I was hoping something would like really ramp up and become like a really favorite song and nothing really did. Then you got songs like In the Eye of the Storm, Poisoned Arrow, um, Spreading Black Wings, One Last Time, Exile from Earth. These songs are all boring as fuck. Like I could not get into these songs at all. I tried over and over again. These songs bored the hell out of me. Um, and they all felt like, remember Will to Power, Reason to Believe? Ugh. It was like the ballad of the album. Yeah. A decent song in its own right, but it was like the song you're probably going to skip on the album. All these songs I just listed, they don't sound like Reason to Believe, but they have that same kind of type of feeling to me. If one of those songs was on the album, I'd forgive it. But the fact that there's so many of these songs that I just wanted to get through them, they didn't present anything of value to my ears, it was pretty disappointing. House of Mirrors was another decent one, I'll mention that. Yeah, that was also one of the singles as well. Yeah, so this one this one reminded me of something like, it reminded me of like an Unleash the Archer song performed by Arch Enemy. It's got that power metal scream at the beginning. You know, it's good, but it's not quite as effective as Unleash the Archers or something like maybe Ice Earth or something like that. But it's a good song overall. Um, again, another song with a gallop beat. So two songs with gallop beats I was gravitating towards. Um, I don't know, it's kind of all over the place for me, but I feel a little bit more negatively than I do positively about this album. Well, I mean, in my first impression, you know, I wrote that I thought this was an amazing album, like it blew my mind. And I still think this is a great album after listening to it throughout the week. You mentioned Handshake With Hell, that's one of my top songs. The way that it kicks off the album is incredible, just this explosion in your face and the riffs are amazing. The only thing about it that I kind of don't like is that I feel like the bridge takes away a little bit too much from the song yeah like it it like you're it's like you're driving on the highway really fast and then you like run into a tree <laughs> now it's kind of you're, like you're dead but at the same time 
you come to a complete stop. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you got so much energy going on, and then it just instantly halts for this section, and then kicks back in. Um, but other, like I was able to look past that as I listened to it, because I'm like, well, other than that, this song is insane. Like I love it. And um, the other song that I really loved was "Sunset Over the Empire," which is another one of the singles. They had five singles. Did we react to all of them? Well, I think we reacted to all five. Did we? Maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. If not, we reacted to at least like three. I don't remember reacting to Sunset Over the Empire. If we if we didn't if we missed one, it was probably that one. Maybe. We I'm... definitely did Handshake with Hell, Deceiver, Deceiver, and House of Mirrors. Yeah. We... And Eye of the Storm. So we did four out of five. That's four. Sunset. At least four. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <Wow. laughs> um, That's crazy, though. It, it is. And um, that song, the way it kicks in with the riff is amazing. Um... I, when the, and when the song ends, I kind of feel like another solo is about to start. It kind of ends a little bit abrupt, but I don't mind that because that kind of makes it interesting. Like, it just ends in a way that you wouldn't expect. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that song, every time it came on, I'm like, oh yeah, here we go. Like, this song's badass. Love it. And one interesting thing I kind of found about this album that kind of ties into what we just talked about with the singles is that the high, some of the highest points of this album are those singles. Sure. Not to say that the other songs are that much weaker, I just feel like they could have released less singles to have more non-singles stand out. Yeah. Like if Sunset Over the Empire was not a single, it still would have been as amazing as it was because of just how it is as a song. You know, because some songs you'll you'll start to develop a bit of a relationship with once it's released as a single. Mm -hmm. You see a music video for it, you attach that imagery with the song, yep. and you kind of develop something with that song before the album's even out. So you kind of develop that with it out of context. So when you hear it on the album, it's great. And then the other songs kind of are, are behind and they have to work towards yeah, the catch being up. more noticeable. Yeah. And some of them do because they're great songs. Um, there's one little detail, and this is a sign of a really good album, by the way. The fact when you start noticing small, tiny details that stand out and you think, oh, that's pretty cool. In Exiled from Earth, the last track, there are these cool pinch harmonics happening in the background in the outro. And that kind of stuck out to me one day. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. They kind of got these cool, like, little sound effects going on just with these pinch harmonics. I thought that was neat. Interesting, you know, little tidbits to throw in uh, at the end. Um, okay, I, I, I feel like I know what you're going to say, but what did you think of Morningstar? I was going to ask you the same thing, so I'm glad we're oh, on the topic. Oh, okay, um, okay. I don't have a lot to say about it, honestly. I think it's, a, it's a, just an interlude track, right? Track number nine. So here's my thing. I think Morningstar is a fine track. I think it's it sounds nice, it's good, there's nothing wrong with it. I didn't skip it. But the placement is odd. Yeah. Why have a... It, track number nine for something like that seems so weird to me. Like, track number five, maybe track number six it should be at. I just feel like an interlude track is meant to break up an album, and you don't need to break up an album two songs before the end, especially if the two songs at the end are not crazy. Mm -hmm. If the two songs at the end were, like, super fucking crazy then I would understand, like, give this calm before the storm type yeah, of vibe, yeah. and then pound the shit down, right? But it didn't do that, so the placement was really weird for me. I don't hate the track. Placement problems, that's I, it. I feel just about the same. I think the, the sound of it is actually really nice, but not having it either in the middle or maybe one, like, second last track could also work. Perhaps, yeah, as long but as the last track is a fucking It's in puncher. a really awkward spot, and they did this exact same thing on Will to Power with a song called Saturnine, which... Not only is has a bad like place on the album, it doesn't sound good. Like at least with Morningstar, it's actually cool sounding. With Saturnine, and I listened to Will to Power again for the first time since we reviewed it, you know, in 2017. Time flies, <laughs> but um, I'm like, you know, Saturnine's doing the same kind of thing as as Morningstar does here. But like Saturnine just doesn't. It's just like, what is this? Why is this here? It's kind of annoying. Now, on the topic of will to power and the comparison of sound, when I first heard Deceivers, I'm like, oh, this blows will to power out of the water, this is amazing. And for some reason, I had some kind of bad aftertaste in my mouth about will to power. Because when we reviewed it, you gave it a toe tag, I gave it a seven. Like, that's a really good score. And I, and I saw that, and I'm like, huh, what? And then I listened to will to power again, I realized, you know what? Yeah, this is actually a solid album. Now, I do feel though that Deceivers does a similar thing to Will to Power overall, but it just does it better. I feel like the riffs are better, I feel like the clean vocals are done in a more interesting and tasteful manner, 
and I feel like it's a lot less cheesy sounding than some of the tracks in Will to Power. Some of the tracks in Will to Power are just like, okay, you can <laughs> you can chill. But overall, Will to Power still holds up. Um, I just think Deceivers just does it better. That's interesting. I'm curious your score now. So let's rate Deceivers. What do you give it? A toe tag. I think it's better than Will to Power. And I gave Will to Power a 7. And Will to Power is still a strong album. I just feel like Deceivers just did it better. Wow. Um, so in a way, we're kind of flipping the script here. Because like I said, I, I still stand by my toe tag of Will to Power. I listened to it again as well. And I went, this is a fucking solid album. And I remember in the review too, I, it was a barely a toe tag for me. It, it scraped the surface, but it got it. Um... I think this album is inferior to Will, Will the Power in almost every way, but there's two main ways I feel it's inferior, and that's vocally and guitars. Um, Guitar-wise, I feel like um, Arch Enemy's always been a kind of a band where when I listen to the guitars, I get a sense of like, these guys were influenced by classical music. Like, there's I a lot of that. arpeggiated type of riffing and, and stuff like that. A lot of classical stuff. A lot of classically album. infused things, right? I didn't find that with this album, Deceivers. I felt like they went a different direction with their guitaring style, and it didn't really have that same type of feel. The vocals, for me, Alyssa's going in a, in a, in a lot more of a clean style. Not that she's clean singing, but just the harshness is not quite there. If you go back and listen to Will... Listen to a song like My Shadow and I off Will to Power, the abrasiveness of her voice is a lot more akin to how Angela used to sing. And I don't think Angela was using the best proper technique. She was probably killing her voice. But that's what makes the band sound like the band. So Alyssa doing that sounds better to me than what she's doing now, which sounds a lot more coached, if I can say it that way. She sounds like she's got a vocal coach and she's doing everything the proper way, but it's detracting from the overall sound. Anyways, didn't like the album that much. I'm trying not to give it a horrible score because it's not that bad. I think I'll just kind of land on a five. Um, it's it, It's got some decent stuff, but overall I was pretty bored of it. I mean, it's pretty interesting that we're kind of on opposite ends with this album, how I thought it was great, better than the last one, and you thought the opposite. Yeah. But um, anyway, Toe Tag for me and a five from Vile Self, so... You know, guys, we're kind of down the middle here. I want to know what you guys think. Yeah, comment in the comments below. Tell us what you think of this album. Do you agree with Vile? Do you agree with me? We'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And that's all we got for you guys today. Remember to subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm TV Fish. I don't Vile. So we'll see you guys later.